Next, we will plot contours of the velocity magnitude. And to do that, um, click on the contours icon up here. And I will give it an appropriate name. I will call it velocity magnitude. And I'll click on OK. And then I will enter details of velocity magnitude. First, I'll tell it over what, you know, where I want it to plot the velocity magnitude. So if I come here and select periodic one, it'll plot velocity magnitude over the domain, the, the flow domain. And for variable, I will select velocity, which will give me the velocity magnitude. And I will click apply. Okay. That gives me contours of the velocity magnitude, but you can see it's still plotting the velocity vectors. So I will go to the uh, tree view here where I can turn on and off entities in the graphics window. So I will turn off velocity vectors. Okay. And let me zoom out. So here it looks like near the outlet, you know, there's no variation in the axial direction and you have fully developed flow. Let me zoom out and then look at the um, flow near the inlet. And so I'm zooming uh, out using the Z uh, by, by typing on Z. And I'm zooming in using the right mouse button. And I can translate using this icon here, by clicking on this icon. And then um, I can translate the model using the, by holding down the mouse button. And let me get a uh, more contours, so I'll get a smoother plot, uh, smoother contours. So I'll go down here under details of velocity magnitude, and I will increase the number of contours to 51. And I will click apply. So you see, I get a smoother, um, smoother contours, and here. The flow velocity is one, which is close, you know, which is uh, the average velocity. And then the flow near the wall is, is slow because of the no slip condition. And then as one moves down, one can see that the flow speeds up away from the wall because of flow development. And then around here, you can see there's not much variation in the axial direction, which, which indicates that the flow is probably pretty close to fully developed, if not fully developed, um, in this region. Now, one has a long skinny pipe, and I will zoom out using the middle mouse wheel, uh, and I'll also translate it. So here I'm using the middle mouse wheel. And so to visualize the entire domains for this long skinny pipe, I can stretch out the pipe in the radial direction, in the view. And to do that, I will go under View, and I will um, click on, I will select Apply Scale, and I will scale it by a factor of 10 in the radial direction. I'll stretch it by a factor of 10 in the radial direction. And so that gives me uh, a better view, and I can click on Z to fit the entire um, domain in the graphics window, and I can zoom out using the middle mouse wheel. And this thing here is the wireframe, this black line, which is not being stretched, right? So let me turn that off by going here and clicking there. And in order to visualize this better, I can also reflect this about the axis, uh, and that'll look like a cross-section through the pipe. So in order to do that, go back to Details of Velocity Magnitude, View, and select Apply, 
reflection mirroring and we want to mirror it about the zx plane which is the plane normal to the screen so i will select zx apply and so that gives me the entire domain stretched by a factor of 10 in the radial direction and reflected about the axis and here you can see that there is a short um, flow, flow development region um, and then you, the flow becomes fully developed. We will plot the pressure as a function of the axial distance along the center line as well as along the pipe wall. So if I go to 3D viewer, I need to plot the pressure along this line and along that line. And so first I need to create quote-unquote locations corresponding to those lines. So I'll do location, line. Let me first um, create the center line and that'll go from zero, zero to eight, zero. Okay, and here I see that that uh, center line uh, is indeed what I want to create. And then I also need to create a line long pipe wall. And since I'm lazy, I'll just duplicate this. So I'll right click on center line and you should see that under user locations and plots and select duplicate. Okay, and I will call this location pipe wall. And I'm still entering details of center line, so I need to double click on pipe wall here under user locations and plots to enter details of pipe wall. And so the, these locations uh, don't change, the x-coordinate. Um, this coordinate changes because now it's at a height equal to the radius. Okay, and so you can see pipe wall has been created and that corresponds to the um, the right line in the wireframe. Okay, so now we have the location. So let's create the, the chart. So I will go to insert chart icon and I will call this pressure variation. Um, Actually, let me call this axial pressure variation. And it turns out I just can't call this pressure because that's an internally reserved name. So you have to be careful about what you call these. Um, and so I'm going to enter details of axial pressure variation. If I go into the data series tab and under location, First, let me plot along the center line. Okay, so this will, so my plot, you know, will be um, along the center line. So, <clears throat> and so x-axis here, I select what I wanted to plot along here, and I wanted to plot um, the axial distance, which is x. And if I go to the y-axis tab, I specify what I want to plot over here, and there I want pressure, so nothing to change over there. And I'll click Apply. So I see the pressure variation along the center line, and it looks linear for the most part, which is what one expects from fully developed flow. Um, and here there's a slight deviation from that where the flow is developing. And here again, you would get smoother plots if uh, one went uh, to a finer mesh. And in fact, one needs to do that. Now, I also want to add the variation along the wall to this plot. So I will go back to data series and I will say 
add a new data series. So that's how you add another line to your plot or another curve to your plot. And I will leave the default name. And for location, I will select pipe wall. Okay, and it retains the, you know, your previous selections for this, for what to plot along here and here. So I don't need to change that either under the X axis tab or the Y axis tab. So I'll just click on apply. And I can go in and, you know, put in appropriate names for these. So this would be center line, this would be pipe wall. And you can see that there's not much variation um, between the two lines, which means that the pressure at the wall and the pressure at the center line are the same. So there's no variation in the pressure in the radial direction, which is what we expect. And then you can, of course, export this to a CSV file and do further processing in Excel. Next, um, we will make a plot of the axial velocity along the outlet, along here. The first thing I need to do is create a location, quote-unquote location, um, that is a line uh, corresponding to the pipe outlet. To do that, I go under location and I select line. So that'll help me create a line corresponding to the outlet. And so I will call this pipe outlet and I will click on OK. And so the starting point, so here I specify the start and the end points of the line. The starting point is 8, 0. 8 being the length of the pipe that is being simulated. And point 2 is 8, point 1, point 1 being the radius of the pipe. And I'll click on Apply. And that creates a location. So if I zoom in um, here using the right mouse button, I can see that there is a line. And this is a little misleading because we have stretched this plot. So what I'll do is I'll turn off velocity magnitude and I'll turn on the wireframe. And I can see that indeed um, the the, you know, the line that I created corresponds to the pipe outlet. So now I can plot the axial velocity along this line. And to do that, I go under chart. And I click on the chart icon. And I'll call it um, velocity profile. Okay. And that goes into the chart viewer. Until now, we were in the 3D viewer. Uh, but chart to view charts, you go under the chart viewer, and it goes there by default. And um, so under data series, OK? So click on details of velocity profile data series. Under location, you see the location that we created appears. And if we didn't create that location, we wouldn't have a location to, to make the plot over. So that's why we needed to create the location first. OK, and x-axis, which is we telling it, hey, what to plot along here? And we wanted to plot the axial velocity, so which is velocity u. And y-axis, so here we tell it what to plot along here. And I will ask it to plot, you know, use the radial distance. So why is the radial distance, if you recall, for an axisymmetric problem? <clears throat> and I click on Apply. And so I get um, the velocity profile at the outlet. And here you can see, you know, this is a very coarse mesh. 
And, you know, you can customize the title and this, you know, the legend name and so on. But probably the easiest thing to do is to export the data into Excel and do further processing in Excel or MATLAB. And to export the data into Excel, I click on Export. And I go to an appropriate folder. I'll go to my working folder. And I already was testing this, so I have this thing called Outlet Profile. Um, but you will have to enter it. Okay. Um, and it will automatically save it as .csv, which is comma-separated values. You won't get this because you don't have that file. And if I go into my working folder, I will see the, you know, the file that was just created, and if I double click on it, it'll open it in Excel, and I'll see that I have the the data, the radial distance, you know, velocity, axial velocity versus radial distance, and now I can compare this to the um, the fully developed profile that is expected from analytical results.